Hi, this is Mike McLean, um, hailing you from behind the scenes here at Coffin Comics HQ, and I'm here to talk to you about dialogue and comic writing. So um, today I'm going to kind of free will this. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I didn't remember my notes for this session, so I'm going to try to remember the scene that I'm going to tell you about, and I'm probably going to get it wrong. I don't want to get any letters or emails or anything telling me how much I suck because I got it wrong. Um, but I'm going to give it a shot anyways. So when writing dialogue, and I, I say for comics and films because they have something very, very in common when you're considering dialogue, is that they have to be very, very economical, um, which is something I love about the media. Um, if you're writing for a novel, you can, you can write a little bit longer stretches of dialogue and people are going to forgive you. But in a comic book or a movie, you just don't have that, you just don't have have that ability to do that. So let me give you a rundown quickly of a scene that I think is one of the best dialogue scenes in film from a film that's going to surprise you. Okay, Is it Citizen Kane? No. Is it uh, Godfather? No. It's a little movie called Planet Terror written and directed by Robert Rodriguez. Okay, Let me set the scene really quick. If those people have seen this, Coffin fans probably have. Um, so we have Rose McGowan sitting in this barbecue joint and our hero, El Ray, comes to him, and the first thing he says to her is, that's my jacket, okay? One line, that's my jacket. Three words. So what do you already know about the characters? One, they know each other. Two, he sets up the conflict right there. She has something he wants, his jacket. Three words, that's my jacket. And she shrugs, and then El Ray says, I've looked for it for three weeks. Could have been six weeks, I don't remember the exact number, but I looked for it for six weeks. So, what does that tell you right there? He's looking for the jacket. Not necessarily for her, she's looking for the jacket. Plus, what happened between them? You can already guess, they had a relationship. They broke up, she stole his jacket. Two lines of dialogue, you know all that information about the characters, okay? Set up the conflict, you already know their relationship from the past. It's amazing, two lines of dialogue. I believe she then says, and it's, the script is a little different than the movie, how long did you look for me? He ignores that line. Okay? So again, we know they had a relationship, it probably ended badly, three lines of dialogue, does all that work. He asks, so what are you doing now? Something to that effect. She says, I'm going to be a stand-up comedian. Okay? He replies, but you're not funny. She says, I keep telling people that, but nobody believes me. Okay. You might be thinking, well, why does he think this dialogue is so great? But look at what you know. They had a relationship. They broke up. Okay. Conflict is established right away with the jacket. What do we know about her? Nobody takes her seriously in life. I'm going to be a stand-up comedian. People think she's funny, but you're not funny. I keep telling people that, but nobody believes me. Nobody takes this character Terry seriously, except who does? El Ray, her former lover. Okay. A few lines of dialogue, you know all that information about these two characters. Um, so I think that's a good representation of what you want to try to do when you're writing a scene in film or in comics. Use every line has to either illuminate the character and their past, past relationships, illuminate what type of person they are, or you have to move the plot along. If it doesn't do one of those things, you got to cut the dialogue out. Even if it sounds really cool and fun, it has to do one of those things. Illuminate the character, illuminate the relationship, or move the plot. And this has been Mike McLean from Coffin Comics HQ, and thanks for joining us.